Hello and welcome to another episode of The Intel with Greg Cosell. I'm Jeff Mosher alongside Adam Kaplan and with us as always is Greg Cosell. He's going to help us break down the running backs that are available in this year's NFL draft. There's a lot of them. There's some pretty good ones. And mm. as we always try to bring it back to the Philadelphia Eagles, along with the rest of the NFL, the Eagles obviously did not re-sign Miles Sanders. They did sign Rashad Penny. We've talked to Greg about that in the past, so you can go check out some past intel with Greg Cosells to get his breakdown of Rashad Penny. But as we sit here today and do this show, Greg, you know, you've got Rashad Penny, you have um, Kenny Gainwell, and you've got Trey Sermon, you know, sort of the the mystery there because the coaches like him, but he only got two carries. And then Boston <laughs> Scott, who just never goes away. Uh, but it doesn't mean <laughs> doesn't mean the Eagles can't bring a running back in. But I do want to sort of get your your overall viewpoint of that. You know, Adam and I have been talking lately. Is Kenny Gainwell really poised for a a bigger uptick in carries or snaps? Is he big enough to handle it? Have we seen enough from him to say he can be that guy? Or is Rashad Penny going to be you know the lead of a of a committee? So what do you think when you see the Eagles running backs uh, as a as a group? Well. I would think they're pretty good. I, you know, they obviously signed Penny for a reason. I know it's a one-year deal, but there have been, as Adam knows, and you know as well, Jeff, there's been a ton of one-year deals after that first week of free agency, so that's not abnormal. Um, you know, it would seem to me because they're they're very much a schemed run game, and by that I mean um, because of the Jalen Hurts factor and what he dictates to a defense in terms of structure and alignment uh, – I'm not saying, you know, you could put the three of us back there and we could run well, but they don't need, you know, they're not a run game where the quarterback just lines up under center and they say, here we are, stop us. They're not that kind of run game. They're highly schemed with a quarterback that dictates so much from a, a defensive standpoint. You know, you, we've probably talked about this before, but you can simply go back to the NFC championship game against the 49ers when they had that touchdown drive to make it 14 seven with the Gainwell 17 yard run and the Sanders 13 yard run, which were both the exact same play. And they ended up with three on three to the weak side. They got exactly what they wanted and it was all based on formation uh, and the Hertz factor. So I would be really surprised uh, if they thought running back early. Now, again, you never know. They could get more picks. They could get to the third or fourth round. There could be a guy sitting there that they say, you know, we love that guy. He's our the best player on our board far and away right now, and we, and we just have to take him. Certainly that does happen in drafts. But I know a lot of fans in Philly probably would love them to get B. John Robinson, mm -hmm. and we'll discuss him in a minute, um, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I, I would be surprised, as I think both you guys would be, if the Eagles with pick 10 took B. John Robinson. I mean, Greg, we're so old. We remember the last time they took a running back, and he really wasn't one, is Keith Byers in 1986. We're talking about first round. So it, you're, you're when talking did they about take Michael? When did they take Michael Haddix? Michael Haddix was before that. Ooh, yeah. uh, Michael Haddix was like early 80. I, I'd have to look it up. Right, but, but he was also, and obviously the, yeah. the whole league was different then. Running yeah. backs were taken in the first round and and often sure. with the first pick in the draft. Even fullbacks. Even, yeah. 1983, by the way, for Michael Haddix. And yep. this is, you remember, and I hate to bring up this for Jet fans. I know we have Jet fans listening. When the Jets, fan, when the Jets took Michael Haddix, I mean Michael Haddix, with Roger Vick, he was a really good athletic fullback. Yep. In Texas A&M, and by the way, fullbacks sometimes are taken early in the draft. I know it sounds. I know it's it's true. Right? It's true. So I mean, as I said, you know, look, when we get to Bijan Robinson, I'll obviously talk about him. But you know, wouldn't you guys be truly surprised if the Eagles yes. were to take Bijan Robinson at pick ten? I would. Shocked. I would be shocked. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. I would say mildly shocked if that's uh, if you can. Because if you do that, then 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 either Boston Scott or Trey Sermon's not going to be. You know be on the roster someone's right. gonna have to go yeah 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 <laughs> and by the way greg so let's get into that it can it do you see Bijan robinson at the next level being a three down back a guy who could handle third down as well yes i i don't really believe Bijan robinson has a weakness in his game based on well, tape i think the only weakness in his game is that he's a running back uh because as we know running backs don't get drafted high but it, it certainly wouldn't surprise me uh if just about every team had him as a top five player on their board and that some teams had him as the number one or number two player on their board. But 
I think we all know um, that he's probably not going to go there. Although the flip side to that argument, not about going number one or number two, but being drafted high as a running back is because he's a really good player. Because he's a weapon. I mean, I think that's the point that needs to be made. Yes, he's a running back, but he can detach from the formation. When you watch him on tape, he runs routes detached like a wide receiver. So he's a weapon. So the flip side is, hey, you draft a guy like that, and you know what? you got to figure it out because the guy's a weapon, and he can create explosive plays. Now, there's obviously two sides, and different teams will see it differently. Um, but Bijan Robinson – you know, I watched him last year and I watched him this year. And I thought, by the way, I thought he improved dramatically from 2021 to 2022. Mm. And he doesn't really have what I would call a weakness in his game. How would you compare him skill set wise to what you remember of Saquon Barkley coming out a couple of years ago? I think he's a better runner than Saquon Barkley. Like better uh, vision? Uh, or just better. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes, I think Barkley to me is a big play back, but not a sustaining back. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas I think that B. John Robinson is much more of a sustaining back. He's got vertical strength. He can run through contact. Um, you know, I think that he's got better patience, better vision. Um, I think he can navigate confined space better than Barkley. Barkley is more purely explosive. Mm -hmm. Barkley at any given point can run 70 yards for a touchdown. Not that Robinson can't. He's, he's, can but Barkley is clearly a, a more explosive back but I think that ultimately what uh, what Robinson is Robinson is is has more of a sustaining element to his his running style than Barkley has mm. now have you like the rest of us tried to play that game where you look at the first round and think where does Bijan Robinson go where does he fall what team makes the move to take him because like we've mentioned yeah. he's a running back so there are teams in the top 10 to 12 that could use a running back, but that's not really ripe running back territory for a lot of teams. Right. Um, I really haven't played that game yet. Uh, you know, I haven't looked at the, yeah. you know, I, I, in fact, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't really looked at the draft order I have, but I, I don't study it. So I can't remember the exact order other than the early, you know, the early, sure. pick, the early picks. Um, but again, like I said, there could be some schools of thought that, Hey, this guy's not just a runner that he's he's a weapon now i spoke to um, a scout that actually uh texas was in his territory and he thought that he didn't absolutely need to be a volume runner to be a really effective player um mm. and and that was one of my questions when i finished you know evaluating him does he need to be a volume runner in order to get maximum effectiveness you know do does your offense need to run through Bijan robinson mm -hmm. because i think the the belief for most, I would think, is that you don't really want to have your offense run through a running back, that that's not the best way in today's NFL to compete for Super Bowls, which is ultimately what people are trying to do. Mm. I mean, which is why the, the, the Titans know that they have to get off of Derrick Henry at some point and, and move on. Right. But, uh, Jeff, to answer your question, I think I, the clock to me would start for Robinson at eight with the Falcons because Arthur Smith, the offense is going to begin with running the football. But after Atlanta, it's really hard to see where he would go, to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of these teams have running backs already. Right. It, there could be a drop. I mean, after well, eight, you, I don't wonder know. if a team, say the Steelers, you know, they don't need, per se, a running back because they drafted Najee Harris in the first round just three years ago, but he hasn't been great. And if you put Bijan Robinson in that offense, maybe they are better. Uh, I don't know. So you just oh, wonder yeah. about teams that have running backs already invested but could use a playmaker like that and and you know, where where he kind of goes you just hit on a great word there jeff playmaker see that's the point i was trying to make about robinson is he's a weapon and mm -hmm. you know then it becomes incumbent upon a team to how do you use a player like that you know the immediate thought is well he's a running back so you got to give him 22 carries a game and and that's what he is but as i said he can split he, he run routes he runs routes like wide a wide receiver um you got to figure it out, you know, as we've discussed many times, and you guys heard the same stuff at the combine, everybody talks about it. What are offensive coaches trying to do? Create explosives, right? That's the, what they're trying to do. He can help you create explosives. So he's a weapon. Um, again, I'm not advocating one way or the other because teams will see it differently. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is the guy's a really good player and clearly, clearly a top 10 player in this draft.
right. clearly. Uh, maybe, point. Top, maybe, maybe top five, okay? And as I said, there might be teams that have him one or two. You know, I know, you know, you guys make more of those phone calls than I do. So, you know, maybe you've learned that. But at some point, when do you draft a really, really good player and say, you know what, we're going to make this work because this guy is really good. Exactly. Because I'm looking at the teams after 10, you know, you get Tennessee at 11. I don't know. Tw- Texans just drafted a running back. They're at 12. The Jets have a good one coming back from an injury. 13. Patriots at 14. I don't see it. I mean, the Packers 15. Not historically. a run- They got two running backs. So I get to 16 and look at the commanders. And I think, well, I know, I know Ron Rivera is on the record saying he wants to run the ball about 40 times a game. So maybe maybe it's all the way to sixteen in Washington. I mean, it, it, it's it's just a, it's sort of it's very oh, and, interesting and, and, to me. Yeah, and, and you know, I know they really like Brian Robinson, but Brian Robinson is much more of a grinder and a sustainer. Right. Right. And, and I like Brian Robinson, but again, he's not going to give you the explosive play element, even though I think he can be a good NFL back. Agreed. Agreed. All right, let's move on. Uh, we'll talk about the next running back uh, guy I like. I think he's got a nice skill set, Greg. What does the Alab- What does the tape tell you about uh, Alabama's running back, Jameer Gibbs? Oh no, this guy is really, really juicy. I mean, this guy <laughs> goes from zero to sixty in a freaking heartbeat. Um, now again, he's another weapon. Now he's five nine and one ninety nine, so you know he's not a big back. He's not a volume runner, but he's again a weapon. This guy is a great receiver out of the backfield. You can split him out, and he happens to run at times, although he's not as big. But at times when I watched him, he kind of conjured up visions for me of Dalvin Cook, you know, mm-hmm. but with with the way in which he runs and the way, you know, think of Cook on those long runs where it just seems like he hits another gear if he gets through the first level cleanly. You know, Gibbs is like that. I mean, there are times, and don't forget, he played in the best conference in the country where he would just either on a run or catch a pass. And all of a sudden, you could see, visually see the change of speed. I mean, all of a sudden there was an uptick and man, does this guy move? Um, so he's a he's a big play back. He's a playmaker. You know, he's a big play waiting to happen. Um, you know, everybody compares him to Alvin Kamara. Uh, uh, whether that's fair or not, it's always hard with comparisons. But I think he can be used in a similar fashion. Kamara has started to become a little bit more of a feature back, although that will change this year because the Saints now have Jamal Williams. So Kamara will probably go back to being a little bit more of what he was a couple of years ago. But, um, you know, Gibbs is he's just an explosive play waiting to happen. And uh, I mean, he just generates velocity and speed so fast. Do you see him? Because he, we should mention he was a Georgia Tech transfer to play with Alabama for one year. Yeah, I watched him last. It's funny. I, I'm sorry to interrupt that. I'm, yeah. Last year, I was watching Jam, Jameer Gibbs on tape last summer. Mm. And, oh, um, yeah, I watched him from at Georgia Tech. Uh, How do he look? He looked unbelievable. In fact, this is the story. A very quick story. So yeah. that particular day, I was watching. Um, Fred Taylor, Ryan Clark, and Channing Crowder were here at NFL Films. You know, they do that show. I forget what it's called. Um, But so they walked by my office because, um, uh, you know, somebody said, hey, they wanted to say hello. And I started talking to Fred Taylor and I had, you know, Gibbs was 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 up and I said, hey, you got to look at this guy because I had spoken to Fred Taylor previously at a combine um, when we were on the field. And I said, I'm telling you right now, and this was last summer, you know, just watching his Georgia Tech tape. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, watch this guy, Fred, because this guy's going to be a first round pick next year. He's going to go to Al, you know, you're already uh, committed to Alabama at that point. I said, he'll go to Alabama, he'll have a great year, and he'll be a first round pick next year because this guy is super explosive. And actually, Taylor pulled up um, on his phone just some like, you know, clips, and he said, wow. This guy is unbelievable. And that was last summer before this year at Alabama. So Hmm. I kind of knew that last summer watching him at Georgia Tech. Hey, on that point, I I just know from watching tape with you over the years, and do you still do this thing where like, let's say you're the, you'll pop the tape on for the first time and you're, you're blown away. Do you tell the guys you're all, Hey guys, you got to see this. You do that. Well, uh, a lot of times at this time of year, I'm watching tape by myself because the matchup people are not here. So um, oh, a lot oh. of this, a lot of this is just watching by myself. And you know, and and I've been doing this a long time. So as you know, Adam uh, and Jeff, you, you probably understand this now, but I've known Adam longer. Is I don't normally get you know super excited because I know how all this works. You know you can get super excited about a guy who gets in the league and it doesn't work. We've seen that with a lot of guys. Then I, I probably get more excited about some guy I see who 
no one is talking about and I knew nothing about. And, you know, I know he's not going to be a first or second round pick, but I think, hey, this guy's going to play in the league and really be a contributor. I sometimes get more excited about those guys. <laughs> but but Jameer Gibbs, I knew nothing about because he played at Georgia Tech. And when I watched him last summer, I'm like, wow, this guy, he just goes from zero to 60 ridiculously. Well, one more follow up on, on Gibbs. Is he a three down back? Because I'm getting different feedback. Like yeah. everybody loves him. But is he really a three down back? Because he's just not. Um, I'm picking up. That'll be in the eye of the beholder and the nature of the offense, Adam. I mean, he's not a three down back if you're going to run Tennessee's offense, you know, sure. but I think he's a three down back if he were to play with the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, I, it depends, I think, on the offense you're running. Uh, gotcha. You know, he's not a foundation back in the sense that you line him up in the eye and you let him, you just give him the ball on gap scheme and, and inside runs and say, you know, just power it in there. I mean, I think he can run inside and he, and he does have a sustaining element to his game, but I don't think he's, you know, it depends on the offense. Like Buffalo, wouldn't he fit in great with Buffalo? Yeah. Th th there's a, that that would be a good example because yeah. Buffalo is week to week as to how much they run the ball. And some weeks he could, you know, if he, if he was Buffalo's number one back, you know uh, you know, some weeks he could have eight carries and some weeks he could have 16 carries, but he's not likely to have 27 carries. Right? Yeah. See, these are the guys, Greg, that I think are in the best position to flourish in the long term because they don't go top 10 to 12. So they don't usually go to a bad team. Right, like Saquon Barkley had to do, and he got hurt, and he's you know right, sometimes right, he had right. bad offensive line. This guy, the Gibbs, will go bottom end first round, maybe even early two, probably to a good team that has pieces around it, and then it allows him to just get in there and and flourish. I mean, if if he made it to the Eagles in round two, which is probably not going to happen, but if he did, my you know how great would that be for his career and for him? I, I mean, you again, know, you know, without knowing and you know what the Eagles are going to do. Their second pick in the first round is what? 30th. 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 You know, let's say Gibbs was sitting there at 30. And We're again, 31 and, for the Chiefs. Go ahead. And, and we don't and we don't know their board. You know, not, obviously no no team puts out their board. And right. and you can talk to as many people as you want, but they're gonna lie to you too. So we don't know what the board looks like. You know, but if the I would imagine if the Eagles got to 30 and Gibbs was there, that he'd be higher on their board than the 30th best player in the draft now i'm not yep. saying they're going to take him none of right. us know that i don't want people to think i have inside information because i don't but you know at some point with these backs somebody's going to take them because they're clearly going to be the best player on the board yeah, and you have true. to take good players I totally agree no doubt you know? about it all right next running back we would like to talk about and i hope i get his name right uh devin a chain a chain a chain a chain from texas a&m now i was looking Doing some work on him, Greg, and I don't know if if this is fair, but I just popped into my head because of his his size, and and I believe he's a, a special teams guy too, a returner, a little yes. little Darren Sproles ish, I guess, at uh five foot um, eight and one hundred eighty five. Yeah, he, he was five eight and a half, one eighty eight at the combine. He ran a four three two. He's a track guy. I mean, he was a sprinter in high school. Um, he ran the sixty meter, hundred meter, and two hundred meters, um, mm. and he's built like a sprinter. You know, he's not. He's a little straight line linear um he's a little tight hip so he has kind of a weird way of changing direction it, it just looks different mm -hmm. um you know in other words it's not smooth and and fluid but he does change direction well and i see i watched him last summer too and then of course i watched him this year and I had to kind of figure it out. You know, it's like when I see a quarterback throw differently. Like it took me a couple of years to go, hey, Phillip Rivers is really good, even though he throws it in a way that, you know, is not pure. Um, right. a, a chain kind of changes direction uh, in, in a way that is not, you know, like, like B. John Robinson and Gibbs, when they change direction, it just, it's smooth as silk. A chain mm -hmm. doesn't look like that because, you know, don't forget when you're a sprinter, you're straight line linear. And that's the way he kind of runs. But mm -hmm. this guy is another guy that can go from zero to 60 in a heartbeat. He's got a little more of a darting slashing style as opposed to a smooth fluid style. He's got that sort of stop and start that looks a little herky jerky, but it's not really. It just looks that way. But he is sudden and explosive and he can do something. Speaking of Fred Taylor, that Fred Taylor told me years ago on the uh, on the floor of the dome, uh, because he was out there for the running backs that year, he said you have to be able to reaccelerate when you're in confined space, and A chain can reaccelerate in confined mm. space. 
Um, so he's a fascinating guy. I mean, he's not going to transition, Jeff, just as you suggested, as a quote-unquote feature back, getting 15 to 20 carries a game. Although he is strong. His spotty is strong. Um, but I believe with his running traits, like I said, bigger than his size, and he's a very, very good receiver as well. That's the other factor. He's another guy that can detach from the formation, that he can probably be a little more than just a complimentary back. And here's what I mean by that. You know how some teams have a number one back, but then like two or three possessions a game, another back plays as, as the number one back, you know, just yeah. two or three possessions. Mm -hmm. H.A. could easily be that guy and then also be a third down factor, you know, normally throughout the game. Um, so he's not going to be a 20 carry a game guy, but I think you could he could be your quote unquote number one back two or three possessions a game and then play on on third down and selected passing situations throughout the game. So, Greg, there are a number of smaller backs in the, for this draft. And another guy who's come off a monster year is Tajay Spears from Tulane. What are your thoughts yeah. on yeah, Tajay Spears is a guy I knew nothing about because, you know, obviously Tulane, I don't see them a lot. Uh, you know, probably a lot of people don't in our part of the country. They um, had a good team, though. They were really good. Yeah. They were, yeah. And in fact, if That's they if, if this was the expanded college playoff, they would have been in it. Yep. Uh, so they actually had a great year. Um you know, Spears, he's a little bigger, uh, Adam. Not not big, but he's Almost five ten and, and was two oh four. He's not a little little guy. Like me, uh, he's like, he's in in that mid range size. Okay, correct, correct. You know, he kind of reminded me of DeAndre Swift coming out of Georgia a few years ago with his overall profile. Profile. Um, he's got great patience. He's got well. Let's put it this way: he's got that desirable combination of patience and decisiveness. So you know, you want to see guys. The old expression is: it's not speed to the hole it's speed through the hole so the first part of that is the patience part the second part of that is the decisiveness and burst part he's got both of that and he's got accelerating speed he's got a, a gliding darting feel to his running style um he's a loose hipped guy um he you know he can run through traffic inside um he can run through tackles outside i mean he's he's really i really like this kid um I thought when I finished watching him, I said to myself, this guy's a day two pick. He's just a really good player. Um, mm. And a, another guy that because he can uh, catch the ball, you know, I, I, this was not a comparison in terms of the, he's this kind of player. But, you know, think of how someone like Austin Eckler is used with the Chargers. You know, mm -hmm. he carries maybe 200 times, really good receiver. You wouldn't call him a foundation back in the sense that you think of guys that carry 260, 270 times. But, you know, I think Spears, depending again on the team, could feel, fill a role like that. All right. Interesting stuff. I enjoyed watching Tulane. I watched them a few times this year. And they, they and even their bowl game, I think they played somebody. They played they, USC. USC, and they yeah. Back and they beat them like 47 45. It was a great game. Yeah. And there was a lot of running in that game. A lot of running. Yeah, we had, he had, had a great game. Yeah. We had it on here in the office because it was during the week. And yeah. uh, people were, you know, screaming because obviously USC was up pretty big and Tulane came back. Yep. Yep. All right, uh, let's move on to the next running back. And he, I believe he started his career at Michigan, transferred to UCLA, Zach Charbonnet. Charbonnet, I hope yeah. I pronounced that correctly you did. as well. You yeah. did. He went back home. He he went to Oaks Christian High School in L.A. Big-time uh, recruit, wasn't he? Big-time recruit. Number three ranked running back and a top 30 player overall, regardless of position, when he came out of Oaks Christian. Um, this guy looks like an NFL back. Now, again, he's a fascinating guy because he's sort of – is part of that whole conversation of the value of running backs because he's six feet, 214. Um, he's just a really good runner. Um, he's big enough to be a feature back, but you get into that whole conversation. You know, what is the value of a guy like that in, in today's NFL? Now, he can catch the ball, by the way. You know, yes, I wouldn't say he's a great receiver, but he can catch the ball. Um, so it's not as if, you know, he can't do that. Um, you know, I like him. I just don't know. You know, I keep thinking with these guys, 
you know, what is the role in the NFL for Zach Charbonnet? Is is, is someone going to draft him and say, okay, you're the guy, and now you start you're running your offense through him? I mean, the guy's decisive. He's physical. He's powerful. He's competitive. He's a downhill runner. He's got great sustaining traits. Um, he can run. He'd probably be most effective working inside, inside mid zone, gap scheme, those kinds of runs. Um, I think he's a better runner just in terms of, of – how to run than his physical and athletic traits would suggest he's got a natural feel for reading blocking schemes and for reading defensive movement. You know, he's, he's just a really good runner. He can work in confined space, but you know, if you guys talk to people, I mean, what's the sense on him? Yes. He's a, he's definitely could be a three down back. He's a stop and start runner. This is, this is from a a coach that gave me goes, loves his vision finisher. Yeah. Underrated hands, stop and start ability. Yep. Uh James Connor's the comp of the who's he with the Cardinals now? Some similar yeah. build. Um I, I like this kid. I, I actually after talking to people, I I, I watched a uh, highlight package and he's Greg doesn't have a very unique running style. I don't know what yeah, to call it. He's, he's a different. really good runner. I mean yeah. the guy who I sort of thought of, because you know, this guy when he came out of college was a I, put up big, big numbers as a feature back. He hasn't been that in the league because of the team he's on, but he kind of reminded me of Alexander Madison a little bit. Oh, Um, okay. You know, and Madison is a good back. back. You know, Madison, his last year at Boise State had a big, big year, and obviously he's behind Dalvin Cook, but I've talked to coaches that who think Madison's a really good back. You know, he's just playing behind Dalvin Cook. Mm -hmm. So Charbonnet is going to be interesting because what you just said about uh, talking to a coach, Adam, I, I feel exactly the same way. Um, you know, in fact, you know, I said he had the ability to reaccelerate off second level contact. He can maintain balance and body control and power. Um, you know, as I said, he works really, really well and can find space. That's what he is. Um, and, and he gets hard earned yards. And and all coaches love backs that get hard earned yards because that's the game. You know, the NFL game is different than the college game. You don't get those big gaping holes where you just run through and there's nobody there. And all of a sudden you've gained 10 yards before anybody touches you. You know, in the NFL, you have to be able to run in tight spaces and get through small creases. Hmm. You do wonder, sometimes the upright runners are the guys with those unique running styles sometimes leave themselves vulnerable to injuries. You know, I always remember Deuce McAllister was kind of an upright yeah. runner who would had a lot to deal with a lot of leg injuries, knee injuries because of that. Um, and it's funny you say that. It's one of my weaknesses in my on my sheet was at times ran too upright, slowing his burst uh, in velocity and power. He's mm-hmm. a tall runner, but he was at his best when he stayed low, you know. So, you know, we'll see. I mean, but he's he just knows how to run. That's the mm-hmm. thing. You know, some guys just have a feel. He has a feel. Deuce Got McAllister it. was a terrific back. It's great, Jeff said, but he – Big back who had great versatility. I, I that's an interesting comp. Yeah, yeah it was. Stop and start. The was a great receiver as well. He was yep. he's on Twitter, man? Deuce does the Saints games. Yeah, yeah he does yeah. the Saints games. I know Deuce. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's move on to the next running back. It's another guy from Texas. He probably you could say argued that he was in the shadows of Bijan Johnson, but a pretty good running back in his own right, Rashawn Johnson. Rashawn Johnson did him last year, did him this year because he didn't have that many runs. He had, I think, like 93 runs each of the you know last two years. Um, you know, th- this guy, by the way, I don't know if you know anything about him. He was an All-American high school yeah. quarterback who was ranked as a top 10 dual threat quarterback coming out of high school. Hmm. And he made the transition to running back one week before his first game as a freshman due to injuries in the Texas backfield. So he had never played running back other than the fact that he was a dual threat quarterback, but he never played running back, um, you know, prior to being at the university of Texas. Wow. So that's, it's pretty impressive. Um, he's, he's an interesting guy. He's a big back six feet two nineteen. Um, you know, he kind of reminded me of, you know, he kind of reminded me of Jamal Williams in terms of his running traits. Um, and, you know, and keep in mind, Williams prior to this past season never had more than 153 carries. And, of course, had 262 with the Lions this year. Um, but Johnson is is physically and competitively tough. He's got sustaining ability. He's an attitude runner. Um, supposed to be, by the way, just an unbelievable kid. Um, there's no question that he runs to his size, he, you know, with a sustaining element. Um, you know, he's decisive. He's a big back. He's got some burst to him. 
you know, I think he's probably a complimentary back. You know, I don't think he's a guy you draft, you know, and say he's the guy. But, you know, then you look at what Jamal Williams has done. Although Jamal Williams at BYU when he came out was a true foundation back, whereas Rashawn Johnson has never had 100 carries in a season in his career, you know, with Texas. So he's never done that. But, you know, he's a, he's, you like you like the way he runs because he's physical and he's competitive. He's got natural power. He's got strong, a strong lower half to drive through contact. He finishes, um, you know, he's just, he's just one of those guys, but he what won't be back. No, no, he's a, he's a, one I understand around three, three through five yeah, is where he'll yeah. go, but it's, it's a great story that he was able to do that with no oh, notice. Supposed wow. to be just a special, special kid too, from what mm. I've been told. Mm. Next guy on our list. When you talk about putting up yards, he put over 3,000 yards in his final two years at UAB. That is Dwayne McBride, Greg. What, what are your thoughts on him? Yeah, Dwayne McBride. I watched him. You know, one of those guys I didn't know a ton about. Um, he, you know, he looks like a professional runner. He's got he, – now, he's he's a little – he's 209, so he's not big, but he's a little Later. bigger. You know, yeah. yeah. Um, and he's five over 5'10". You know, he's got pretty good size. He's got patience. He's got vision. He's got short area burst and balance, both in terms of his body control and contact balance. He's got really good play strength and finishing traits. I mean, that's what he is. Now, he has no receiving ability whatsoever. He he had five receptions in three years at UAB. So, again, where do you draft this kind of guy? But he has extensive experience both in zone and gap scheme run games. So, you know, what is he? What is he in the NFL? That's guys like this. I think he's really a good, a good back. I think he becomes really team specific because he's got really good traits. Think Elijah Mitchell coming out of Louisiana as a sixth round pick in the 2020 NFL draft. Okay. He went to a team, the Niners, and of course he's been hurt a lot, but when he's played, he's been really good. But think of that, you know, Mitchell's a sixth round pick. I, I remember liking his tape coming out of Louisiana, but you know, most teams are not going to draft those guys high, and then it gets to where you go. Does does the, does it fit? You know, he's not going to be for everybody, McBride, because there's no receiving element whatsoever to his game. Interesting. We, I feel like we're now getting into the uh, part of the running backs where you get some good size, you get some good grinders. Obviously, all the traits guys go early, and then you know, you get into this, like, for our next running back, a guy with some pretty good size, Tank Bigsby from Auburn, ah, right? Six foot. Yeah. Uh, I think he's about over 200. So it's closer to 210. Uh, another big, big guy there. Yeah, he's uh, six feet, 210, give or take six feet. Um, now, this guy, he he runs like his name. This guy runs hard. <laughs> I mean, he is a decisive, determined velocity downhill runner. I mean, he's got a short area burst. He's got natural power. He gets hard-earned yards. He finishes. Um, you know, he's a really fun guy to watch. Obviously, Auburn had a poor year this year. He, he, Numbers-wise, he had a better year the year before. But he's got the look and feel of a back you could give the ball to a lot. That's the way he looks. Again, hmm. you know, our, what is that role? And you know, how many teams are going to look at him and think, okay, we draft Tank Bigsby, we love his traits, and we're going to give him the ball 18 times a game. You know, you just, that's, that, that sort of is the the macro worldview of this whole conversation, Jeff, as to, you know, where these kinds of backs get drafted. I mean, this kid was a five-star recruit and a top five running back prospect in the nation when he came out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, and he came out of Georgia, by the way, so we went to Auburn. Um you know, he's not a shifty back and, it's, you know, he's a little more straight line linear with the physical mentality. Um, he's much more of a short area burst guy than a long speed guy. So he's not necessarily, you know, going to take it to the house, um, but he, he runs hard. And, you know, we all know that at some point in this league, you got to run the ball. Now, the debate as to where you draft backs is a separate debate from the fact that at some point you got to run the ball. Um but this guy runs really hard. I mean, and and he's he's a one cut type guy, one cut downhill ability. Stick his foot in the ground and go. Hmm. All right, there's All right, a lot of stay. use for that. In the, go ahead, Adam. 
I was going to say, oh, wait, go ahead. There's a lot of use for what I want. I was going to say there's a lot of use for those kind of guys. Greg said you have to run the ball. Sure. And, uh, you know how many teams are looking for a fourth quarter guy to be able to help you grind out? Look at Buffalo. Like yeah. 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 I was right. hoping you would say that. Look at but Devin Singletary yep. couldn't do it. And this is a problem for Buffalo. Yeah, they can move the ball. But who's your drive sustainer when you get, when you coaches will tell you, we need a guy when we have to run the ball, we need that guy. And the, the Bills haven't had it. I, that's no. been a problem. And the flip side Buffalo. of that. The flip side of that is why guys say you don't need a running back early is because what happened in the second half of the Super Bowl? The Chiefs came out and ran the ball with Isaac Pacheco, uh, Isaiah Pacheco, excuse me, who was a yeah. seventh round pick. So then people say, look, they came out and, they, you know, and he had a good year and they ran the ball. But, you know, they also have one of the greatest quarterbacks, you know, to play. And, you know, so there's a lot of variables here that go into that. It's easy to make these sort of platitudinous statements, you know, and everybody does that at this time of year, particularly on social media. And, you know, if you talk to coaches, a little more goes into that, but at some point you got to run the ball. Now that doesn't mean you need beats on Robinson and you can't have a run game. We know that, but you know, you feel a lot better. And I've had these conversations with coaches about a lot of positions because, you know, years ago, people said, oh, you could get a safety in the fifth round, you know, and that's changed, you know, but you talk to coaches and if they don't have a player at a certain position, they always feel like it limits what they can do from a playbook perspective. So it's always easy to say, oh, don't draft a running back. You can get them in the sixth round. Well, yeah, sometimes you can and sometimes it works, but sometimes it doesn't. We don't talk about the times it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Let's say let's stay down south for our last player. That's Zach Evans from Mississippi. What are your thoughts? Well, there's one other player after Evans I want to mention that I okay, really cool. like. Good. Uh, Good. But Zach Good. Evans, yeah. Zach Evans is a really interesting player. Um, now he started his career at TCU. He was the first five-star recruit in the history of TCU football and wow. then transferred to Old Miss. Okay. <laughs> now, this guy is explosive, okay? He's not a great runner, you know, in terms of the nuances and subtleties of running. You know, he, he's not as patient as you'd like. You know, he attacks the line of scrimmage too fast. There's not really a pace and tempo to him. But you talk about a guy that is explosive and has great vision in the open field, okay? Not not working to the line of scrimmage, but in the open field. So he can he defeats angles. He runs away from the defense, um, you know, but... He's just, you know, and, and he's only 202. That's what he was at the combine. So he's not a big guy. Um, you know, somewhere along the line, this guy to me should be on the field because he's so explosive. Um, mm -hmm. But it won't start out that way. Um, but he's he can take it to the house. I mean, that's a special trait. Not every, you know, there's a lot of backs in this league who are really good backs, but they can't really take it to the house unless it's just totally clean. This guy can beat angles. Um, th this guy can truly, you know, hit the home run. He is really an explosive back. Hmm, interesting. All right. And who was the running the back? One team? guy I wanted to mention who, whose tape I really liked. And yeah. I, I, I think, you know, I'm really curious to see where he gets drafted. Um, you know, again, I don't know what that means, but is Eric Gray uh, from Oklahoma. Started his career at Tennessee. Um, he was a big time recruit when he went to Tennessee out of Memphis, Tennessee. Um I think he's got a great dis combination of traits. I mean, he's he was almost exclusively a shotgun runner at Oklahoma, which a lot of backs are in college football. But I think this guy ran zone gap scheme. He's got a great refined feel for it. He's very nuanced. He's patient yet decisive. Um, he has great short area burst. I mean, this guy has instant acceleration through the first level of the defense and a slashing, darting running style. He's got subtle but really decisive cuts and change of direction without losing any velocity now he's not a home run hitter but he can make those cuts at the second and third level man does he make them quick um and he's a really good receiver um he pass protects um you know in an odd way with the exception of the home run ability which the back i'm going to mention definitely had i, I don't know if he still has it the way he had it um he kind of reminded me of Miles Sanders a little bit um, coming out of Penn State. Now, Sanders was a little juicier in terms of the home run ability. He also kind of reminded me of Cam Akers a little bit. And, you know, and we know Cam Akers is a good bat. Um, so, you know, I really like Eric Gray's tape a lot. Interesting. So of the, let's finish it this way. Of the guys here, Gray, Evans, Bigsby, McBride, and Rashawn Johnson, the guys who kind of are good, but 
maybe not as um twitched up as the uh the first four or five we went with uh we discovered any of those ones um stand out to you greg that with a little bit of this it sounds like you really like zach evans so with a little bit of oh. uh, coaching and some improvement you can see them being a little bit more than just like maybe a rotational back i mean gray stands out to me in that regard okay. evans would need work you know evans needs sort of in an odd way that's a crazy thing to say but I think a coach would understand Evans needs to sort of learn a little more about how to run. Uh, and, 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 but he is, he's super explosive. You know, that's the thing. I mean, um, you know, I'm trying to think of all the guys we went through. Um, you know, I, I, the Devin H chain is a fascinating guy to me too. I'm very curious to see who drafts him, mm. you know, because you got a bunch of guys here. This, this is actually a very good draft for backs. Um, it's just a, it's just the fact that backs don't get drafted the way they used to be, but it's a really good draft for backs. There's a lot of good backs in this draft awesome. who are going to play in the league. I don't know where they're going to get drafted, but they're going to play in the league. Great stuff. All right. So next week we're going to have the penultimate, the Intel with Greg Cosell. We're going to go over wide receivers and then perhaps because that'll be a week before the draft, uh, we'll get any prospects that we might have missed with you that are yeah. that are uh, at other positions that we didn't cover yet. And then, of course, the week after will be the draft, and we'll have uh, a ton of great draft recap coverage. So uh, that was good on running backs. And again, next week, wide receivers and any other top guys that we missed at certain positions. That is going to do it for this episode of the Intel with Greg Cosell. For Adam Kaplan and, of course, Greg Cosell, I'm Jeff Mosher. Thanks for watching.